Hey, what's up everybody, Too Tall Toby here, and in today's Onshape step-by-step tutorial, we're going to take a look at this challenge, 250105 Shelf Bracket. Now, this is a Tier 2 level complexity challenge that comes from our website, TooTallToby.com, where you can sign up for a free account, and then you can click here to get started with free practice models. And here you can see we've got a repository of over 130 practice models challenges where you can see if you can turn a 2D drawing into a 3D model and calculate the accurate mass of that model. Now there's about 20 challenges that are in here that are free for anyone with a free account. And then if you really like the app, you can sign up for our premium membership, which will unlock the entire library. Well, one of these totally free challenges is this one here, 250105. So I'm gonna click here to practice and then I can see that 133 people have successfully completed this model. So let's see if we can become number 134. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to say click here to begin and go. So the question is, what is the mass of this part in XXX grams? And we're going to enter that answer in down here. Down on the title block, we can see that this part is made from plain carbon steel, and it's got a density of 7,800 kilograms per cubic meter. Now, even though we're running against the clock here, I always think it's a good idea to kind of start out by coming up with a basic game plan. So in the case of this model, the first thing I'm going to ask myself is where should the origin be located? and what should the first sketch be? Now, this model has symmetry. So we can see here, we've got the center line symmetric running down this direction, and we've got symmetry going in this direction. So I think the origin is gonna be somewhere along those two planes. And I think I would probably opt to just put the origin right here, right at the center of this rectangle. And that rectangle is also going to be my very first sketch. So I'm going to start out a sketch on the right plane, and I'm going to create a rectangle here at 40 millimeters by 80 millimeters. Then I can take that rectangle and I can extrude it out to a depth of 15 millimeters. Now, once I have that geometry in place, I can start a new sketch on this top surface of the rectangle, and I can create this rectangle here, a rectangle which is 40 millimeters by 190 millimeters. So I'll create this rectangle here up on this top surface. Then I'll take that geometry and extrude it out to a depth of 10 millimeters. And then the only thing that's gonna be left is to add this slotted feature here and to add these holes. So now that I've got a basic game plan, let's get into the model. I know that took about a minute and a half to come up with that game plan, but like I said, I think it's always time well spent to come up with that plan before you get started. So let's bring up on shape here and let's take this drawing and move it over onto our second screen. And let's bring up our keyboard cam so you guys can see all the cool shortcuts that I'm using. And here we go. Let's begin this challenge. We're going to click here to create a new document. I'm going to call this 25-01-05 shelf bracket. Remember, if you're an OnShape user and you ever get stuck, you could go here to the public repository, and then you could search for this syntax. And either I or someone else may have modeled this part, and then you can take a look at their work. So I'm going to say create this as a public document so everybody can search for this file. And then I'm going to choose the right plane. I'm going to press the S key to begin a new sketch. I'm going to press the N key to get normal to. And I'm going to press the S key to create a center point rectangle. And the center point rectangle is going to be located right here, right at the origin. Single click, move my mouse, single click again. And we're going to say that this is going to have a distance of 80 and a height of 40. Now, I know I deviated from the plan a little bit there. Originally, I said the origin was going to be down here. But after I got into the model and looked at it a little more closely, I decided I'll just put a center rectangle right there on the origin, just kind of modifying the plan on the fly a little bit. So if you're following along with as a step-by-step -step tutorial, that should be your first sketch. And now I'm gonna press the S key. And what I like to do is right mouse button and choose customize. And then what I do is I add the extrude command to my S key menu. So here you see, I've got the extrude command added right there in my S key menu. And that way, whenever I get into my sketch and I fully define my sketch, I can just jump right into the extrude command. Now, you may be asking why not include those holes in the original sketch, and you certainly can do that. I just prefer to keep those holes separate because then later if I wanna suppress or unsuppress those holes, it's a little bit easier for me. So I'm gonna to choose to bring this out to a depth of 15 millimeters, enter, enter, 
And now I'm going to choose to make a new sketch on this upper surface here. Pick this face, begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch. I'm going to press the N key to get normal too. And then I'm going to press the S key again. I'm going to make a rectangle. I'll just make this rectangle here 190. So click, click, let go. 190, enter, and 40, enter. And then I'm going to press escape, get out of that rectangle command. And then I'm going to pick this point here, which is the origin. And then I'm going to pick this line here. And then I'm going to hold shift and press the letter M. And that's going to be my shortcut for the midpoint sketch relationship. So shift M. Oh, yeah, that looks good. I'll zoom out a little bit here. And we can see that that sketch is nice and fully constrained. So let's take that geometry and extrude it. So S key extrude. And we're going to bring that up to a height of 10 millimeters. So there we go. There's the bulk of the work. Now all we got to do is add those holes and add that slot. So let's add the holes first here. I'm going to pick this face, begin a sketch. So S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal too. And then I'm just going to create a line here. So S key, create a line. And I'll single click over here and move over here and single click again. And that line is going to have a distance of 55. And that line is going to be centered. And it's also going to be 20 millimeters up from the bottom. Well, this is nice because, you know what, this point here is also 20, 20 millimeters up from the bottom. So I can just pick this point here, pick this line. And then once again, I could use Shift M for midpoint. Yeah, I like that. Nice and fully constrained. And then I can press the S key, go to circle, and I can single click here, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, and I can type in 12 for the diameter of that hole. Single click here, move my mouse, single click again, press escape, and then I can pick this arc, and then I can pick this arc over here. And now to make those equal, what do we press? We press E, E for equal, and that adds that equals relationship to those circles. So now I can press the S key, jump into my extrude command, and I can change this to be remove. And for my depth here, I'm going to say this is going to go through all. So that punches those holes through, hit the check mark, and boom, we're done with that feature. Now one final feature, that slot up top. So we pick this face here, S key, begin a sketch, N key, get normal too, S key, sketch a line and this line is going to have a start point somewhere around here just kind of line it up with the origin so single click move my mouse single click again let go of my mouse and i'm going to type in 95 for the center to center length for that slot then what i can do is i can put in another dimension so i can press escape here s key dimension create a dimension that goes from this edge to that end point of that line single click and i'm going to put in the dimension 50 enter and then finally what i can do is i can press escape again because currently i'm in the dimension command so I press escape and then i'm going to go over here now it's currently set to offset entities but if you fly out this menu you can choose slot so i'm going to choose slot then i'm going to pick on this line and now i'm going to double click on this dimension here this 20 and i'm going to type in 13 enter enter and there we go. Now we've got our slot, which is 13 across, 95 long, and 50 millimeters offset from that end. So now, once again, we can press the S key, go to extrude, and we can change this to remove. And that's going to go through all. And now we can press P on our keyboard to hide our planes. We can press Shift P if we want to hide everything, including the origin. We can give this thing the final spin, kind of look it over and look at the drawing and make sure that everything looks to be matching. We can also go here to the name of the part and right mouse button, and we can choose Assign Material or Edit Appearance. I like to do Edit Appearance because then you can change this to kind of match the color that the customer gave you. Now, you probably don't want to do this when you're speed modeling, but anytime I'm working with a customer, I like to kind of give them the parts and the colors that they, they actually specify. And then the other thing we can do is right mouse button here on the name of the part and go to assign material. And for this material library, we're not going to use the on shape material library. We're going to use the TTT custom materials. And then this is going to be made out of the TTT material plain carbon steel. So now we can hit the green check mark. And now we can go down here. It's kind of behind the clock. But we can go down here to the, um, the mass properties icon. And when we choose mass properties, we're going to say, what's this part? Uh, what part are we measuring? You just kind of click anywhere here on the part. So we're measuring this part one and we're coming up with a mass of 834.1 grams. So now we're going to go down here into our mass and we're going to type in 834 and enter. And oh yeah, 
congratulations. That answer is correct. You completed this model in eight minutes and 44 seconds, and you will be awarded one point on the community scoreboard. Oh, yeah, I like it. So I'm going to say submit. And now we see that 134 people have completed this model. Yes. And if we scroll down a little bit here, we can see that my time was eight minutes and 44 seconds. And the average time is six minutes and 45 seconds. So I'm running a little bit long here. The cool thing is that if you want, you can try again. You can see if you want to try to improve your time, you can click this try again button. But maybe I'll save that for another time. And then down at the bottom here, we can kind of see where the fastest times were coming in from. So our SolidWorks users in first, second, and third. And then we have our OnShape user here, Airwaves Ted, who did this in one minute and 29 seconds. Very very impressive very very fast runs there so let me know in the chat if you have any questions i hope that you guys enjoyed this video if you did be sure to like be sure to subscribe to the channel and of course be sure to visit us at twotalltoby.com and sign up for your free account so that you can start trying these practice models challenges and i'll look forward to seeing everyone in the next on shape tutorial